Understanding how to calculate the critical path is one of the most valuable skills in project management. And it's also essential knowledge for the PMP exam. So in this video, I'm going to be breaking down this critical technique step by step with a simple example, showing you exactly how to identify your critical path and calculate float using the forward and backward pass technique. Before we begin, it's absolutely crucial that we understand what float is. So float, sometimes called slack, is simply the amount of time an activity can be delayed without delaying the project end date. So it's essentially the wiggle room in your schedule. Now, understanding float is crucial because it tells you which activities must stay on schedule and those that can be delayed if necessary. So for the PMP exam, you absolutely need to know how to calculate float using the forward and backward pass technique, which I'm now going to show you. So I've just opened up a new sheet. Now, what I've also done is I've added a range of different definitions to this sheet. So if at any point you want to understand some of the terms I'm using, or if this is all new to you and you're not quite sure, just pause the video and you can have a look at each and every one of the definitions above. I now want to walk you through a simple network diagram. It has four different activities, as we can see. So one, activity two, activity three, and activity four. Now, the first thing that you are going to need to do is enter the duration that you expect each of your activities to take, even if that's an estimate in the beginning. So in my example, if we look at where the duration field is and where we need to add it, it's in the middle at the top. So in our example, activity one takes five days and must be completed before activity two and three can start. Activity two takes four days, activity three takes seven days, and activity four takes three days and can only start after both activities two and three are finished. So now let's go through the process of finding the critical path step by step, and we'll begin with the forward pass calculation. So the forward pass helps us determine the earliest possible times that each activity can start and finish. So we need to calculate two numbers for each activity box. The early start, which is the earliest day number when an activity can begin, and the early finish, which is the earliest day number when an activity can end. So let's start with activity one. Since it's the first activity, its early start is zero. This means we can start on the first day of the project. Now to find early finish, we just need to add the duration to the early start. So zero plus five equals five. Now this essentially means that activity one will finish on day five. Moving on to activity two. Activity two cannot start until activity one is finished. So it's early start equals activity one's early finish. So this is five. To find the early finish, it's the same process. We add the duration to the early start. So it's adding these two together. So that is nine. Now this means activity two will finish on day nine. For activity three, like activity two, it cannot start until activity one is finished. So its early start is also five. Again, we need to add the duration to the early start. So five plus seven, that equals 12. Or in other words, activity three will finish on day 12. So finally, for activity four. Now this activity cannot start until both activities two and three are finished. So we must use the, la the latter of their finish times. So activity two finishes on day nine and activity three finishes on day 12. So we need to use 12 here. So the early start for activity four is 12. Adding the duration to 12 plus three gives us an early finish of 15. Or in other words, activity four will finish on day 
15. So our forward pass tells us that the project will take at least 15 days to complete. So we could put this in a, in a little green just to differentiate it for now. That is our big number we need to take from that first process. So now let's do the backward pass calculation. So for the backward pass, this helps us determine the latest possible times that each activity can start and finish without delaying the entire project. So we need to calculate two more numbers. The late finish, which is the latest day number when an activity can finish without delaying the project, and the late start, which is the latest day number when an activity can start without delaying the project. So we work backward from the end of the project for this. So it's late finish equals 15. So we want the project to finish on day 15. So we can't let activity four finish any later. Now to find the late start, we subtract the duration from the late finish. So this is 15 minus three, which is 12. This means activity four must start no later than day 12. So for activity three, it's late finish equals the late start of activity four, which is 12. So activity three must finish in time for activity four to start. So subtracting the duration, 12 minus seven equals five. So activity three must start no later than day five. So in activity three's box, we'll write, write, we'll write, sorry, late start five in the bottom left and 12 for late finish in the bottom right, so here. So for activity two, it's late finish also equals the late start of activity four, so 12. So it's late finish, so that is 12 here. It also needs to finish before activity four can start. So subtracting the duration, 12 minus four equals eight. So, act, so activity two can start as late as day eight without delaying the project. So just to recap, in activity two's box, we'll write, write eight in the late start and 12 in the late finish. So finally for activity one, it's late finish equals the earliest late start of its successors, so activities two and three. So activity two's late start is eight, and activity three's late start is five. So we use the smaller value, which is five. Subtracting the duration, five minus five is zero. So activity one must start on day zero. So in activity one's box, we'll write late start, zero in the bottom left and late finish five in the bottom right. So now all that's left to do is to calculate the float. So now we've got all the other numbers inputted. So the formula we need for this, so float equals late start minus early start. So let's calculate this for each activity. So if we go to activity one, the late start is zero, the early start is zero. So the float essentially is zero minus zero is zero days. So this means activity one has zero wiggle room. It must start exactly on day one. For activity two, late start is eight, early start is five. So eight minus five is three days. So three, in other words, it's this minus this. So this means activity two can be delayed up to three days without affecting the project end date. So for activity three, the late start is five, the early start is five. So the float is five minus five, which is zero. So activity three has zero wiggle room. It must start exactly on day five. Now for activity four, we have late start 12, early start 12, so the float is 12 minus 12 is zero days. So again, zero float. Activity four must start exactly on day 12. 
So now you know how to calculate the critical path using forward and backward pass and how to identify float in your project schedule. If you found this helpful for your project management work or perhaps even your PMP exam prep, give this video a thumbs up and do drop a comment down below. It's always good to hear back from you. If you have any questions about this process, I'd like to know those too. So with that said, over to you. Best of luck and I hope you